morning. It's going to be a good day. We're going to eat here in a little bit. Kelly, will you hand me the other mic just in case I need it? I've been playing with this mic all morning. Thank you. title of the message today, we've been talking about the yes, we've been talking about God's yes for us and your yes for him, all he wants for you in that yes, there's so much packed into the yes, last week we talked about the no's within the yes, the no's that we have to say when we say yes to God, there's no's in our life that we have to say no to, there's things in our life that we have to say no to, just all the different things, how God, how much he loves you. In the yes. Today we're just talking about the goodness and mercy within the yes of God. You know, there's goodness and mercy in his yes this morning. That's what he has for you and I. How many have ever been chased before? By a girl, by a boy. How many of you have ever been chased by the cops? Man, I have been chased by the cops, man. I remember running one time and I was running through the, I was running so fast away from them through the woods. Man, I got out of there, and my legs were cut up from briars that I ran through, and I didn't even know I ran through them because I was so, my adrenaline was pumping so hard. I was just, I just run, and I got done and got away from them and looked down, and my legs were just bleeding from the, I've run. Some of you have run from things that have tried to haunt you, circumstances, situations. You've run from those things. And this morning, I want to break off generational curses off of our families, off of our lives, things that run after us that we do not want to run after our children and after our grandchildren, the things that we walked in, the things that we did. I don't want them running after my kids. The things that ran after me in the world, I don't want them running after the things of my kids and my, my grandchildren and their, their children. I don't want the same thing for them that I had. I had no one in my lineage to break those things off. Maybe you don't either, but today we're going to break those things off. So, Father, we just thank you today, right now, that we break off everything that's tied to our lineage. Lord, we break everything off that God has chased us, that was not of you, Father. Everything that has chased us, the wrong things that have chased us and put us in a corner. Father, the things that have caused us to walk away from you, the things that have caused us to walk away from the goodness of God. We break those things off right now. Every generational curse we break off right now. And Father, we speak goodness into those places. We fill those places with your goodness, with your glory, with your mercy, with your mighty power, with the presence of God. We fill those places right now, Father. And we just thank you. In Jesus' name, amen. If you have your Bibles, turn to Psalms 23. Psalms 23. I'm trying to get my glasses fixed, guys. I got this bifocal thing, and I'm trying to... I just can't even get it. It's just messing with me bad. Um, you know, so if, if I'm doing this a lot, it's just, just go ahead and agree with me because I have to either stand clear back here or I, I just can't get it. I went to the eye doctor, and they wanted $400 for another prescription, and... and uh, so I don't know if I want to go that route. Let's do it again. I've been paying for glasses for quite a bit now. And I'm kind of tired of paying the bill for that. So I just speak healing over my eyes right now in Jesus' name. You have that same problem. I speak healing over your eyes right now in Jesus' name. Got to bring clarity. Are we still ringing out there? I hear that ringing up here. I'll switch if we are. I'll just... Are we good? All right. If you guys are watching online, sorry if you're hearing a ringing. Okay, good. Psalms 23. It says, The Lord is my shepherd. Shall not want. He makes me to lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside the quiet waters and he restores my soul. 
He guides me in the paths of of righteousness for his name's sake. Even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil. For you are with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You have anointed my head with oil. and My cup runs over. For surely, goodness and mercy will follow me all the days of my life. This version here says, goodness and loving kindness will follow me all the days of my life. I'll take all of it. I'll take it all. Whatever it is, I'll take it. Whatever God wants to follow me with, I'll take it. Let it reign in my life. Father, we just come to you this morning. We just thank you, Jesus, that you love us so much. You were willing to pay a price that we could not pay. Bear a burden that we could not bear. Thank you, Father, for this season. Celebrating your birth. Jesus of celebrating your birth coming into this world. There's no room in the inn. You laid in a manger. We just thank you, Father, for the humbleness that you show us that we can walk in. In a reflection of who you are, who you called us to be. We glorify you. We magnify you, Lord. We love you this morning. You're a merciful God. You're a merciful God. Jesus' name, amen. You know, there are difficult days for all of us. Many of us are tired, we're beat up, we're beat down. We feel discouraged. We just feel flat sometimes. You know, some of us have lost loved ones that we're not going to be able to walk through this holiday with. And I pray for you that God will bless you and help you in this time of loss. He will be with you. Today's message is about that. It's about the goodness and mercy that will follow you regardless of what you go through. David talks about, even though I go through the valley of the shadow of death, the goodness and mercy will follow me. You might be going through something hard right now, but know this, that goodness and mercy are after you, are following you. And this psalm here that we're looking at, it brings a refreshment to us. It brings a comfort to us. As we celebrate this season of Jesus Christ, our King, who was born for us, just to die for us. I'm grateful for that this morning. Do you know who the first person that this psalm helped? See by now? David. David was the writer of this psalm and administered to his heart because this psalm was inspired by God. And David, even though he was going through all these different things in his life when he was writing the Psalms, you know, he was going through things like like the aggravation of King Saul, and he was going through the things of the uh, opposition of the Philistines, the pressures of leading a divided nation. David was going through all these things in the midst of writing a Psalm like this. Even trouble in his own life, in his own marriage, in his own relationships. Even with his own heart, the plague of sin within his own heart. David was going through all these things. Yet he still wrote this psalm, and I believe the Lord took him back to a place. The Lord took him back to a place that when he was that little boy out in the field, the shepherd out in the field, just feeding the sheep, loving on the sheep. Can you imagine going from that state in your life from just life was kind of easy. I mean, he was fighting off lions and bears, but you know, life was more simple than for David. Now he's a king. There's people, there's nations coming after him. There's nations that are divided that he's trying to bring together. He's trying to bring peace in the midst of his own turmoil of his own life. And he remembers what he did for the sheep and the words came to him. The Lord is my shepherd. He begins to think about what that means to him, how the Lord is his shepherd. He begins to think about those words, the Lord is my shepherd, and how he cared for the sheep and how they were in need of nothing because of that, because they needed, they didn't have any wants. Then he has those words that says, the Lord is my shepherd and I shall not want.
And if the Lord is your shepherd, you are not going to want for anything. You're not going to have a want for anything. There's going to be needs that he's going to supply. There's going to be things in your life that he's going to bring to you, but you're not going to want for anything. You're not going to have any need for anything in your life. We don't need anything but him. He's all that we need. He is our all in all. He's everything that we need. And the words continue to come to David as he thinks about what, what it means the Lord is the shepherd. He leads me into rest. He leads me into righteousness. He restores me. He restores my soul, and he's going to restore your soul as well. Even though his heart wanders, his spirit falters, the Lord picked him up. The Lord's going to pick you up this morning. He will never let you go. You guys realize that God will never let you go. You literally have to let him go. He's not going to let you go. He's going to hold on to you. He's going to hold on to you tight. And we talked about last week about in the past few weeks about different things getting in the way of us getting ourselves wrapped around God. He wants us to be. We talked about just wrapping ourselves around him and sin will keep us from those things. Sin will keep that closeness that he desires for us to have. Sin will keep that from us. I want to be wrapped so tight around God that I'm not going to let him go. And I know he's not going to let me go. I want to be so close to him, so tight to him, so in love with him. Some of us have walked through valleys. I know I have. Man, I've walked through a lot of them. But David says here, even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil. Even though you go through those things in life, even though the trials and tribulations come upon you, you do not have to be afraid of the outcome of the situation because he is with you and he's going to walk you through those places through those dark places, through those death places, through the places that just discouraging, the places where people are tearing you down and eating you for lunch. I know I'm probably, at, I'm probably the meal for a lot of people a lot of the time. Um, I'm probably on the supper tables of some people, the discussion about me, and that's okay. If they're, if they're eating on me, they're not eating on you. I'll take it. But even though we walk through the valley sometimes, even though we go through those things, God said that he would never leave us. He was with us always in those things. How many of you are going through a dark valley right now? I know I am. Some family stuff. In the midst of this, in the midst of what we're walking through right now, don't be afraid. Don't fear the outcome. Don't fear what's going to happen on the other side. Keep walking. Because in your yes to him, goodness and mercy follows that. Keep pressing in. Keep pressing on. David's faith continues to strengthen as he's, I shall not want. Because he goes from I shall not want, and then he goes to the end of that, and he says, and goodness and mercy will follow me all days of my life. How many days? All. How many days does that mean? All. That means all the days of your life, goodness and mercy will follow you. You guys awake this morning? When you're tired, when you're drained, when you're jaded, when things are just not going right, listen. He will dwell in the house forever. He will be yours forever. It says in Psalms 103, it says 1 and 2, Psalms 103, verse 1 and 2, it says, Blessed be the Lord, O my soul, and all that is within me, bless his name. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and forget not his benefits. Today we're looking at this psalm and we're looking at to um, 
It's going to bring refreshment to us. It's going to bring refreshment to our hearts and to our souls because love is in pursuit of you this morning. God's love is in pursuit of you this morning. His goodness and His mercy is in pursuit of you this morning. Nate, can you come up here? Where's your, where's your son at? Luke, Luke, can you come up here? I'm going to name you goodness. I'm going to name you mercy. Leave you behind me. Stay behind me. Stay behind me. Don't walk away. Just stay right behind me. Goodness and mercy. Love it, man. Love it. Have you guys ever have you guys ever seen sheepdogs? You ever seen a sheepdog? Have you ever been out in the field and watched a sheepdog chase after the sheep and round them up? Shepherds, shepherds will take sheepdogs and they will take them out in the field. And they don't leave without their sheepdogs. Like they're out in the field with their sheepdogs because the sheepdogs will take the sheep and they'll herd them up and they'll bring them in and all the stragglers that go, all the stragglers, they'll bring them in and, and, and bring them to the shepherd. I'm going to go off of this mic and go to the other one if you don't mind. To the, and they'll bring them to the, to the shepherd. So, so, so imagine that these, these sheep are all over the place and, and these dogs run out and they continue, they run after and run after and run after and run after the sheep and they bring them, they herd them in and they bring them around to where the shepherd is so the shepherd could feed them, so the shepherd could minister to them, so the shepherd could, could give them water. And he says, the, the word says that, that he leads me beside still water. Do you know that sheep have this big old, this fur, and this fur will lap up water. And if they're by a raging river and they lean in to get a drink, it'll, the water will come up and it'll fill their faces up and it'll, they'll, they'll tip forward and they'll lean in and they'll fall into the river and it'll take them away. That's why God leads us beside still waters. That's why he refers to us as sheep, and he leads us beside still waters because he does not want us to get caught up with the things of the world, with the raging waves of the world, but he wants us to be calm and caught up in the calmness of who he is. I love you guys being behind me. This is good. I love having... I love it. Man, you guys are big. <laughs> and think of it as a shepherd out. And just think of it. I mean, our shepherd. So Jesus, we are the sheep and Jesus is before us. He's the shepherd that is in front of us. And Jesus has sheep dogs, goodness and mercy. I mean, these are some bad dogs. But I, I, I would love to have, like, Goodness and mercy, follow me. I mean, is it is it cool? I mean, because you know, Jesus is in front of you, and like nobody can mess with you because goodness is like God is in front of you, and you got this like goodness and mercy following after you everywhere you go. Listen, put this in your mind because if you're a Christian, if you're serving God, this is what it looks like. This is what it looks like. Goodness and mercy are gonna follow you around everywhere. Let Jesus stay in front of you and let goodness and mercy follow behind you because it's going to be a continuum. They're just going to continue to follow after you. It doesn't matter how deep the valley, how dark it gets. It just goodness and mercy is there with you. Everywhere you go. It's just, it's just awesome. I love it. They might not be fast. <laughs> but they're like sheepdogs. They're like sheepdogs. They're just these, these God just has these... Big old dogs following after him, goodness and mercy. And some of you might say, well, my life is a mess right now. When you give your life to Jesus, the same thing happens. When you give your heart to Jesus, when you dedicate your life to Jesus, he assigns these dogs after you as well. And when you choose to serve him, when you choose to love him, when you choose to live for him, he brings this into your life. It's part of the walk with him goodness or mercy. I'm not saying you're not going to go through valleys because you, more than likely you are. I'm not going to speak that over you, but um, I know I've went through them and I know that I'm still going through them. 
but his goodness and mercy is with me. Anytime I tripped to fall, he picked me up and carried me through everything that I've ever went through. I look back, just like David looked back, and he's writing this psalm. I look back and I see every time that I've tripped and fall, God has picked me up. When I wasn't serving him, somebody picked me up. And when I was serving him, I knew who it was that was picking me up. When I was being chased by all those things that wasn't of God, I remember times of him still picking me up. And I didn't even know him. I didn't even have a relationship with him. I didn't want relationship with him. People tried to tell me about Jesus, and I did not want to hear about it. Because of my shame, because of all that I was living in, I didn't want to hear about the things of goodness and mercy with what I was doing. The drugs and all the sin and all the things that I walked in, I didn't want. And the reason I didn't want it, because I didn't want to recognize. I couldn't receive that God has something this good for me. But now I've received it and I recognize it and I know what it means and I'm, I'm excited to know that I have goodness and mercy falling behind me all the days of my life and that God is before me. James says in James 1.17, it says, Every good gift and every perfect gift is from above comes down from the Father of light with whom there is no variation or shadow due to change. I love that passage, James 1.17. Every good gift in life comes from the loving hands of God. I'm so thankful for it. Sinners blame God for everything and thank him for nothing. We should thank him for everything and blame him for nothing. That's how we should walk in this life. You've probably run into people who have, like, blamed God for every single thing that's going on in their life. But they have no praise report or thanks for all the things that we know that God has helped them through in their life. We should keep our hearts steady for him. Remain upon him, thanking him in everything, knowing that he's a good shepherd. That he has good things for us. That he wants for us. This is good news for you and I because I'm glad that he's not chasing me with justice anymore. Because the hammer would be coming down if he was. But he's chasing after me with mercy. You know, the Bible talks about, in Psalms 83, it talks about a fire consuming the forest as the Flames set the mountain ablaze. If you ever watched a forest fire, I mean, everyone that's a firefighter is called out to all these different blazes, and they're, they're trying to put these blazes out. And this talks about, this, this, this scripture here in Psalms, it talks about, it says, A fire consumes the forest as the flames set the mountain ablaze. And that's how God's judgment pursues wickedness. Aren't you thankful that you're not wicked this morning? Aren't you thankful we're not under that judgment this morning that God, but yet he is chasing us with goodness and mercy. He's a good shepherd that wants to keep us close to himself this morning. And I don't understand why people would want to run from goodness and mercy. I don't know why people come to, to the sanctuary or the house of God or they come into a relationship with God and they still continue in the form of running away from God. When they're running from God, they're running from goodness and mercy and God don't want you to run from him. Romans 2, 4 says, the kindness is meant to lead you to repentance. God's kindness is leading us to repentance, not chasing us, not, he's leading us to repentance, to a holy place, to a righteous place, to a consecrated place, to a sanctified place of living, to be righteous. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life. Thank you, Jesus.
I want you guys to say this after me today. I, I want to just, I want to say this prayer. I want you to believe it in your heart. If you just repeat after me, I promise it's going to be good. I'm not going to give you something that you're going to take back later. I bind unto myself today, say that. The strong name of the Trinity. The Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost. You know, we need to bind ourselves together with cords that cannot be broken. And these are cords that cannot be broken if you bind yourself with these things. As you're in relationship with Jesus, going through the things that David went through, going through the valleys, all the different things that David went through, as you're going through those things, you could still be bound with the things of God, with the Father, Son, the Holy Spirit, binding yourself with those things, within those things that you cannot be broken. No one can yank you away from that. No one can tear you away from the goodness of God. No one can change the fact that when you're serving God, that goodness and mercy is following you. No one can change that for you. You can walk away from God and walk out of that fellowship with him. But he said he will never leave you. And he won't leave you. He won't forsake you. And this represents Christ being, listen to these words, Christ being with me. He's behind me. He's before me. He's beside me. To win me, Christ is to comfort me and restore me. He's beneath me. He's above me. Christ is in my quiet times, and he's in the dangerous times as well. He's in the hearts of all those that love me. Now speak this over us all. He's in the mouth of our friends and our strangers. The ones that we don't even know. When the Lord is your shepherd, you're surrounded all sides. All sides are covered. So it'd be, my, it'd be me like taking 10 men, 10 more men and just walking around with them around me all the time. That's what it looks like. If you can, if you can see, I see everything in, 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 in a prophetic realm where I see things finished. I see finished products. A lot of people can't see things like that, but I do. I mean, I could visualize the, 10, the 12 men around me already. I visualize it. And when you walk in your life and you visualize goodness or mercy following you all the days of your life, what do we have to be afraid of? I mean, what's the best that can happen? They take our life. We go to heaven. All right. Some of you, some of your family's lives have been taken. They're on to heaven. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. We're going to see them again. We can't fret over those things. We can't change those things. We can't change the fact that one day we're going to go and meet our maker. You can't change those things. Let's talk about the things we can change. That's knowing who we are, whose we are. Knowing the goodness and mercy is always going to be with us. Things that we can change is, is this world that we're walking in, the people that are in front of us, the people that are around us, that our, our life will influence their walk, our life will influence the dreams that God has for them, and they will see you and they will want him because of you. Because you might be that first Jesus that they meet, because he's in you and he radiates out of you. And you just turn them to him and let them see him. All the days of my life. Everybody say all. All the days of my life, goodness and mercy will follow me. When you belong to the shepherd, this will always be true to you. Listen, your worst day will never be so bad that you're beyond the reach of God's grace. And your best day will never be so good that you're beyond the need of God's grace. I don't know who the, that's from. I found it somewhere. I wish it was my quote, but it's a good quote. I'm going to read it again. Your worst days are never so bad that you are beyond the reach of God's grace. And your best days are never so good that you are beyond the need 
of God's grace all the days of my life. I know there's a lot of things going on in the world today. I know there's a lot of warfare. There's a lot of battles. There's a lot of things that we're seeing in the world today. But through all that, we cannot be fearful. Through all that, we cannot be stressed out. Through all that, we cannot struggle in our hearts and our relationship with God. We just can't. There's no reason for you to be struggling this morning knowing that God is your God. I mean, knowing that the God of the universe created you with a dream, with a vision for you, with a goal, with a plan for you, knowing that that same God, because of our sin, he sent his only son down to this earth to die for you and I, knowing that he was going to, Some people think, well, Jesus didn't go through pain and stuff. Oh, yeah, he did. Yeah, he felt it. He felt it just like you would feel it. But in the midst of that, he still said, Father, and when he was watching them do it, he still said, Father, forgive them for they don't know what they're doing. They don't even know what they're doing. I want to always recognize when I'm re-crucifying him. When I'm, if you could imagine it this way, when you're sinning, you basically have a hammer in your hand and you just keep driving the nail. It's a little deeper. And you're creating a distance between you and him and he don't want that distance. He wants you wrapped around him. Like, I, I love having goodness and mercy around me. It's just like, I just these guys are awesome. And I love, you know, I love having, man, you guys are big. Man, I cannot believe it. It's like, but I love having goodness and mercy around me all the time. I love having good people, good friends, strong friends around me that will keep me in line, that will keep me encouraged, that will keep me. If you got friends that will keep you discouraged, get rid of them. They're not really your friends. They just want you to stay where they are. God's got better plans for you. If you've got friends that are constantly tearing people down, get rid of them or, or get, them, get them to Jesus, one or the other. We ain't got time for friends like that. We ain't got time for things that are bad. We got time for this goodness and mercy to be with us all our days and just following us and just God's right in front of us. And it's like all these people around you is like, man, nothing's going to touch me. If something happens, a little fox happens to sneak in and squirrel in, they're just going to stomp on it. The enemy's so little. I mean, he's so stinking little, he can't really do nothing to you. Again, the only thing he can do is that the, what do you give him power to do? He's got no power. You've been given all those things. God has given you all of those things. He's given you all those things to conquer the enemy. Greater is he that is in you than he who is in the world. I mean, do you realize that? I mean, you guys, like, the problems, and I'm going to talk to us this morning, you know, we're talking inside the church this morning, this body. No matter what we're going through this morning, it's not bigger than him. It's not bigger than our God. It's just not. It doesn't matter how big it seems to you, it's not bigger than your God. It might seem like it because it's what we experience and we can only understand with our human minds. But when you start getting out of your own head and start getting into the things of God, that's called renewing your mind. But the things of God, you start understanding his side of it a little bit and it makes a little bit more sense. Then you can have more peace in your life and not be so afraid and tormented by fear and anxiety and all those things that just ripple in people's lives. We don't have to worry about the outcome of the elections this year. We don't have to, or next year. We don't have to worry about the outcome of anything like that because we know he's got it. It doesn't matter who's in office. And none of that really matters, guys, because listen, when it comes down to it, we're in office. 
we are the ones in office. We're the ones that should be running the country. The church is the greater in all the whole scheme of things, and we should be the ones that are rising up and running our country. And how do you do that? By your voice being heard, by your voice calling out to the youth of this day, to, to the teens, to the young adults, calling out to them and telling them who they are and whose they are, letting them know that goodness and mercy follows them if they give their lives to Jesus. The other stuff is just structure, and it's the structure of, of our country is jacked up really bad right now. probably always has been. We just never recognize it as bad. It's just been blown up a little bit in our faces because, you know, when we were kids, Randy, you and I were kids, the worst thing that would happen was a car wreck on the, on, the, on the news station. You know, you'd see a car wreck and everybody's freaking out, man, somebody wrecked a car. You don't even hear about that stuff anymore. It's just media. It's just hyped up and it's got where we can hear things in the instant. It's all been going on all along. We're just hearing about it now. So, why are we fearful of it? It's been going on. Same reason that Adam was hiding in the garden. I was afraid. Why? Why were you afraid? Well, because social media told me that I sinned. All this was going on. There's nothing to be afraid of. Not one thing. It's been happening, and it'll continue to happen. Though you walk through the valley of the shadow of death, you will fear no evil, for he is with you. He's in front of you. He's beside you. He's behind you. Man, you guys are warm. It's like a blanket wrapped around me right now. I just love this. <laughs> We're going to go eat here in a minute, guys. But before we do, I just, I just want to take time to, to pray with you all. speak peace into your life right now. I speak the goodness and mercy into your life right now that you recognize that it's following you. That God has got you surrounded by an army that's fighting for you because he is for you. If you go through a trial, if you go through a dark place, take the lesson from it and move on. Take the lesson. Don't take shame. Don't take guilt. Don't take condemnation. But take the lesson and move on with it and learn from it and grow from it. Let's just bow our heads. Father, we just thank you right now again. We come to you. We glorify you, Jesus, for who you are, for whose you are. God, we just thank you this morning that you know us intimately that you're in intimate relationship with us, not a distant relationship with God. As we shed off sin of our lives, Lord, and we shed off the things of the world, you draw us closer and closer and closer and closer, Father. And in that closeness, we start recognizing more and more and more the things we're not supposed to do, and we recognize more and more and more the things that you want us to walk into. Father, my heart cries out this morning for those who are hurting, that you would comfort them. They would have a deep understanding and recognize that goodness and mercy is behind them and you're in front of them. Thank you, guys. So if there's anyone here this morning that don't know Jesus, I ask that you come up and pray. If you do know Jesus and you just need strength, if you need him to help you this morning, if you're battling something this morning and you need to talk to Jesus, just come and talk to him. We're going to play the song, Jessica Rose's song that she wrote, and it's just such a, a meaningful song, but we're going to play that. And when that song's over, um, we're going to head down to, so let's head down there to, to the youth center. So it's, 
You can walk. It's walking distance. <laughs> right down at the end of this thing um, by the reps fitness. And then the dinner will be set up in there for everyone. So I think it's ready. I think everything's ready. I don't, I don't know. My, my bride's not here, so I'm assuming everything's good down there, ready to go. But as this song plays, I want you to ask the Lord if, if there's anything that you need changed in your life, anything that you need different in your life. Ask the Lord to show you. He's got something for you. And it's peace, goodness, and mercy. So let's play that song and then we'll come and pray, guys. Don't be afraid. This is our own Jessica Rose. She just sang for us. Thank you. I can feel the wind blowing. I can hear your voice calling. He tugs on your heart. Come.
That's where he wants us, folks, back in the fire of our first love. He just wants that passion in our hearts for him. Lord, we just thank you today for your word going forth. And God, may it passionately fill the hearts and lives and produce fruit for the kingdom, Father. Lord, we thank you today that we can celebrate a dinner. As we celebrate you, Lord, I pray that you bless your people today. I pray you bless the hands that prepared the meal today. May our fellowship, Lord, center around you. May our conversation be in the heavenlies today, Lord. Bless your people, God. Fill them with the power and presence of your glory, Lord. In Jesus' name, amen.